Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. It's summer and with all this heat and humidity I'm actually thinking about jumping into a pool which I haven't done in a couple of years. Well what better time to talk about amphibious cars I thought. When I was at the lane last month I actually saw two cars designed by this guy named Hans Trippel and one of them you've probably heard of before it's quite well known while the other one is completely unknown. And they both have some interesting stories behind them. And it's the same story, really, about a guy who just has a unique talent for designing amphibious cars. Now, my apologies up front, there are some German names in this, and I'm bound to mix up the pronunciations. But here, for fun, is a special feature for you on the designs of Hans Trippel. He was born in 1908 and began working on his first amphibious vehicle design at the age of 24. He put the car through several tests and along the way attracted the attention of Reich's defense minister Bromberg in Berlin. The Wehrmacht were very interested in Trippel's ideas for an amphibious car. Defense financed Trippel's venture and purchased his vehicles, which was called Trippel SG-6. Most were powered by Opel engines, and some by Adler. Nearly all SG6s were built for the Wehrmacht. These were known as the Schwimmwagens. Now in German, they don't cars are not called cars, they call them wagons. And that's spelled like this. And you can probably figure out what Schwimm means, so swimming cars. After France was invaded in 1940 and occupied, the Germans took over Bugatti's works in Molsheim and Trippel's production of the SG-6 was moved there. Over a thousand Schwimmwagens were produced there, but only a few have survived. The SG-6 and other variants were built in Molsheim until the Allies bombed the factory and threw the Germans out in 1944. And because he had run a factory that used slave labor during the Nazi occupation, Trippel was arrested by the French. After the war was over, he would be sentenced to five years in prison. But Hans Trippel was a young man and wanted to get back to building cars again as soon as he could. He was released from prison at the end of 1948 and floated around in post-war Germany with no money and nowhere to go at first. He eventually linked up with some friends from before the war, actually built prosthetics for disabled veterans for a while to make ends meet. In 1949, he began tinkering with a new car, Using a 300cc single-cylinder motor from a scrapped motorcycle, he built a tiny two-seater with a single-piece hull that he intended to be amphibious, but for civilian use this time. It was an interesting little car that he was often spotted driving around Stuttgart, where he moved after he married his new wife Gretel. But with so much of Germany's infrastructure, rolling stock, and pre-war cars wrecked or gone, having been cannibalized for steel, which was in short supply, there was really no market for an amphibious convertible, even if it was an inexpensive microcar. So Triple began working on another prototype made of aluminum with his new partner Pratek. This would also be a microcar. Cheap and economical transportation was desperately needed, and the small engines used in microcars could be sourced from anywhere. Triple seems to have intended this car to also possibly have an amphibious version, as the hull was continued on the bottom and is the reason the wheel openings were made so small. It's also the reason for the gullwing door, which was done since the opening was cut at nearly halfway up the hull. He had to expand the opening around the roof so the driver could climb out. And so by accident, Triple had invented the gullwing door, although it was actually only one single door. The opposite side of the car was flush bodywork. Triple and Pratek patented the gullwing door but did not use it on their production car. Instead, they sold the design to Mercedes-Benz, who went on to use it on a much more famous sports car. The final version of Triple's small car had an aerodynamic body that tapered down at the rear. The engine was located at the back and was a 498cc Zundop twin-cylinder two-stroke. With 18.5 horsepower, the car had a top speed of 72 miles per hour, making it very sporty. It was even referred to as a mini Porsche. With the rear hatch open, it actually looks kind of conventional. The curvy bodywork was pressed in steel by Carrozzerie Bobel. They even made a convertible version. This little mini sports car was only made in small numbers because the factory was very small and for the most people in post-war West Germany, 
There was not much demand for sports cars, and those who could afford them were not really interested in a noisy microcar. So production stopped in 1952 when Bobel went bankrupt, but Triple was confident in his design and tried to find other interested companies to produce it. The first to try were actually the French. SIOP, the parent of Rosengart, licensed Triple's design but made some modifications. The headlights had to be raised to meet French safety requirements. They actually accomplished this by adding two more, which looks pretty nice actually. The ride height was raised and the wheel arches were enlarged. This car, called the Marathon, was powered by a 750cc air-cooled twin Panard Dyna engine, but only about 15 were ever made. SIOP was in financial trouble and could not afford to produce it, so by 1954 the Marathon project was dead. Triple kept working on his design. He swapped a 750cc Heinkel engine into another prototype with the new raised headlights, but now added a wraparound windshield. A company in Belgium expressed an interest, but they went bust. Somewhere along the way, a fiberglass body was made, and a different company in Norway purchased rights to the design. They changed it to make use of a chassis and engines purchased from the bankrupt Gutbrod company. It had a front engine and front wheel drive, and was called, unironically, the Troll. Only five were made in 1956. Triple still hoped to get the 750 into production, and at one point he lent the car to a new friend who actually drove it straight to NSU, where it was taken apart and analyzed. NSU had yet to introduce a new car, but when the Sport Prince came out in 1959, with a rear engine of course, it was pretty clearly inspired by Hans Triple's little coupe. This betrayal would have been the last straw, but Triple found another company, Widener, who were interested in producing the car with a few more modifications. They changed the engine again, this time to a 677cc twin-cylinder two-stroke. All the glass was enlarged, and it was called the Condor S70. The Widener company expected thousands of orders, but only ever built about 200 cars between 1957 and 1958. There was no demand for the car. The little two-stroke twin made it crude when the public's tastes had evolved past microcars and it was priced at 7,000 Deutschmarks at a time when a standard Volkswagen cost between 3,500 and 4,000 and was much more practical. Widener shut down at the end of 1958. It turns out I was incredibly lucky to see this car at the museum. This little red car is one of only two surviving Condors known to exist. Hans Trippel was definitely discouraged from all the failures and setbacks he experienced trying to get his auto venture off the ground. Despite living in a time when post-war economic expansion was happening all over Europe, with rising living standards and the explosion of the consumer economy, Trippel's very nice car design still failed to catch on. Frustrated, at one point he remarked, I've only really been used as industrial fertilizer, a supplier of ideas, without being involved in the harvest. So Triple abandoned his sports car and decided to go back to his roots with a design for another amphibious car, this time for civilian use. The pretty convertible he came up with having fins again just like his tiny microcar ten years ago, this new prototype would definitely taste success. It was introduced at the Geneva Auto Show in 1959 and got a lot of attention. Triple soon found a company to build the car based in Lubeck, it was named the Amphicar, and production began in 1961. For power, they used a four-cylinder Triumph Herald engine in the rear for balance, 1147cc and 38 horsepower. As to why they thought the engine from a Triumph Herald was strong enough to power a car with two functions is unclear, but it was just strong enough to give the car a top speed of about 70 miles per hour on land and about 7 knots on the water. Amphicars have no rudder and use the large wheels to steer in the water, just like Triple's SG6. The door sills are high up and have rubber seals, and the car is equipped with a bilge pump. Prices in 1961 began at $3,395 in the U.S., or around 10,000 Deutschmarks in Germany, compared to $1,565 U.S. for the Volkswagen Beetle. Amphicars have been used in TV shows, publicity stunts, and it's had some famous customers, including U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson, who was known to take guests in the car into a nearby lake at his ranch, yelling that he had lost his brakes. 
The Amphicar was arguably the most successful production car Hans Triple ever designed, and by far the most famous. Everybody wanted one, but as it always turns out, very few actually bought one. Two different companies actually built the Amphicar. Assembly took place in West Berlin from 1962, and it was produced until 1965, although history texts say through 1968 because there were so many unsold cars. The vast majority of Amphicars were actually sold in the United States, some in the UK, and very few in Germany. It actually couldn't be sold in the U.S. anymore after 1968 because it no longer met road safety requirements. In all, just under 4,000 Amphicars were built. So why did a car that's so desirable and sought after today struggle to sell in its own time? Well, mostly it's because there weren't a lot of people back in the 1960s who had money to spend on a car that had no practical use. It's just down to the nature of having to perform two tasks. When you try to design a machine to do one task, you're fine, and even there, some people struggle. Designing a machine that does two tasks equally well is really difficult. You end up compromising one or the other functions, or both. And so there was a saying that the Amphicar was the fastest car on water and the fastest boat on land, but it was neither a good boat nor a good car. It was the classic proverb of trying to be a jack-of-all-trades and doing none of them well. The wealthy and famous who had the extra money to spend bought Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and Bentleys. The Amphicar is a quirky, oddball kind of thing. It was a novelty that only a select few people actually wanted to own, and that's still the case today. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this look at Hans Trippel and his unusual designs. If you did, subscribe or leave a comment. Uh, place a like, and that would be a great way to let me know what kind of content you would like to see. And anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs> it's got the little red light there on the front for, for boating. So you can s maybe sort of see it on the ocean, although that's a little bit uh, decorative. I love the Amphicar.